grew up in a trailer park, am I correct? Yep. How many bedrooms? Three. Three bedrooms, three kids, and parents. No, 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 no. Seven. Seven kids? No, no, five. Five. Was just, the, my twins was for my dad, so we had Michelle, Dallas, Kyle, Ashley, me. Five. Five. Yeah, Michelle was in and out. Michelle was my stepsister. Right. She was older. And the parents? Three bedrooms? Uh-huh. I had my own. Because you were the oldest. Yeah, I was way older, too. It was, okay. like, it was like a nine-year difference. And then... um. The other, the other three was in one, right? And then my mom and stepdad was in the. So would y'all bring it like, uh, like Eminem character at Eight Mile? Probably worse. Probably worse. My my stepdad is literally one of the worst human beings on the planet. But y'all did have indoor indoor plumbing and running water and things like that. Yeah, but in the winter, I'd want to have to. I had to climb under there. You got they got this thing called skirting. Goes around the bottom of the trailer, stops the wind and everything. You got to crawl under there and you got to duct tape the pipes. Yeah. And then you always got to keep the water running a little a bit drip, so it doesn't, so it doesn't freeze. freeze. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we had, yeah, we had running water. How does, it get, how does it feel, I mean, to be embraced like you are by black culture? It's the best. I wish everybody had that feeling. Right. You know what I mean? It's weird at the airport because then <laughs> I'll get stopped and black people start freaking out. And white people are like, who's he play for? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we know him? Right. So... Yeah. What made you join the military? To get out of the trailer park, get away from that dude, right. my stepdad. Why the Navy? Why not the Army or the Marines or Air Force? My A buddy of mine um, woke me up. It was my senior year. I didn't take the ACT, didn't take the SAT. Nobody went to college my family. I didn't know you had to do stuff like that. Right. He woke me up. It was a Saturday morning. And he goes, Gary, come on, come on, come on. And his dad was in a car waiting up front. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, what? Mike goes, come on. He's, and he's in my ear. He's, got, he's in my room. I don't know. How, I think my mom let him in. Right. And she was like, you got to get out of here. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you're going to be stuck here your whole life. So he took me down to the recruit stage. He had already joined the Navy. Right. So the Navy, Marines, and Army was all in the same building. Yeah, I don't know right. where Coast Guard and Air Force was. Yes. So I met with all three that day. And Marines said, we're the first ones in. I'm out. I don't want to be the first ones no, in. No, no, I'll be second or third. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be first ones in. The Army guy was lying because he, he, he knew I wrestled in high school. And he was like, yo, you're a wrestler? He goes, you could, uh, you join the army, you could wrestle. I said, I'm three and 30, bro. Ah! I've won three times, I lost 30. I beat the same guy three times. Nathan Eby, Edgewood High School, still know his name. And I said, I'm the, I've been pinned 29 times. I go, there's not a high school gymnasium in Cincinnati, Ohio. You show me the ceiling, I'll tell you a freaking high school it is. I saw them all, Shannon. You know what I mean? So the Navy guy was just cool. He's like, oh, we can get you in. I was like, all right, I'll join the Navy. And my stepdad always told me, he goes, he used to call me a freeloader. I'm in high school. We used to be like, you got to stop freeloading off your mom, man. You got to get a job. Keep in mind, I don't have a car. We don't right. have any money. He's not working. Right. And he told, always told me, like, I got you. You have to be out of the house by the time you're 18. I said, where am I going? He goes, I don't care. You got to be gone. So, him, I left when I was 17. Beat him to the punch. Wow. Yep. That was on purpose. I said, when can I leave? They said, when you turn 18. I was like, July 26. They said, you can leave July 23rd. I said, do it. Best decision of your life? By how different How different would your, Gary Owen's life have been had he not joined the military and got out of there when he did? I'd be fat, my wife would be fat, and I'd have a fridge full of Mountain Dew and Doritos. <laughs> but but it wouldn't be a sister? Hmm. Probably not. I'd be miserable. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be looking at all the black girls on TV like, I wonder what that's like. <laughs> I definitely would have been a sister. How did your family react when they found out you like black women? Like, I ain't cool with them like that. So I won't Mom about. either? You no, I don't cool? talk to my mom either. Nobody. No, no, you just your dad, your mom, brother, son. I know I sound like Amanda Seals right now. <laughs> there you go, yeah. hates me. <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry. And I don't know, man. I don't want to bag her like that, but it's whatever. Um, yeah, mom's different, though. Like, I feel bad for my mom. She's just been beat down by life. And really? I, I've told her numerous times, like, I could, I could help you. I can get you out of this, but you just got to leave that dude, mm-hmm. my, her, my stepdad, and she won't leave him. So last time I saw my mom was May 20th, 2021, because my brother died. My brother died May 20th, 2015 of a heroin overdose. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know. One, I didn't, uh, I didn't. How do I start this conversation? Because I got to talk about my brother to get to my mom. Yeah, go ahead. So... When my, I didn't know my brother was doing heroin. Okay. So this is, this is how life works. Like the universe, man, it, it picks you up and then it humbles you at the same time. 
So I'm coming off Think Like a Man. I'm starting to sell a lot of tickets now, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm making more money than I ever had. Mm -hmm. And career's really starting to take off. And then Ride Along comes out. So now, in the course of like a year and a half, I'm in two number one movies in the country. Mm -hmm. And and in Ride Along, you didn't have a big scene, but I had a scene that stuck out. Mm -hmm. You know, So life's good. My brother calls me. First, he messaged me on Facebook because he never had a cell phone. I didn't know he is because drug addicts are not good with money. I don't know if he knew that. <laughs> so he calls me. He, first, he messaged me on Facebook. He goes, Gary, I'm about to call you from this number. It's my girlfriend's number. I was like, okay. He goes, I need your help. And I said, let me guess, money? And I remember he texted me. He goes, he goes, I'll punch in your I'll never ask you for a dime. And I was like, what is the problem here? So I called him. He's, he's crying on the phone. I don't know. He's... He's about to shoot up. Mm -hmm. He can't stop himself. So he's like, I don't want to lose my daughter. He's crying. I don't know what's going on. He's like, Gary, I don't want to die. I got this little girl. I can't stop myself. Mm -hmm. And then the phone goes dead. And I go, I don't know what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. I call right back. His girlfriend answers. And she goes, he just shot up. So I could hear my brother moaning in the background. So I was like, I was like, what do you mean shut up? She goes, he's heroin. I was like, what? So it's everything's like going nuts right now in my brain. So she goes, I don't know what to do. She goes, he, he's, he's an addict, you know, and I'm like, so I said, okay, I'm going to call my mom and then I'm going to have her come over and get him and I'll call you right back. So I called my mom. I said, go get Dallas. Uh, he didn't overdose. He just shot up mm -hmm. basically. So she's all right. She runs over there and I'm on Google now looking up heroin and rehab facilities. And I don't know what to do. This is all within the course of like five minutes and, 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 Shouts out to my ex because I, I don't want to act like she's just a terrible person. She was right there with me. She was right there looking on her computer. I'm looking on mine. And then we found a place called the Quest House in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it was like $4,100 to get them in there for like two months or something like that. And so I said, all right, I called, called the Quest House. They was like, because, you know, heroin's a morning drug. Mm -hmm. You don't do it at night. Right. You do it to wake up. Right. So this is all going on in the morning. So I called them. I said, you know, I'm going to get the information. My my ex runs down to the bank, gets a cashier's check, forty one hundred. My mom picked up Dallas. I met her at her job in the parking lot. I hopped in her car, and we drive him down to Bowling Green, Kentucky, from Cincinnati. About a three four hour drive. We get him checked in, and he's asleep the whole time. Like he's not waking up. That's the first time I've ever seen like a drug addict in the in the midst of literally just out. Mm -hmm. Like this you see on Skid Row. Right. That's him in the back seat. Right. So it's, it's really my head up, honestly. So then we get them down there. I check them in. And we're not a we're not a touchy-feely family like that. Okay. So that, I just remember he gave me the biggest hug. And he was like, he was like thanks. Da -da. And then we, we get him checked in. And then he wrote me a couple letters while he was in that meant a lot to me. I still got him. And then uh, he gets out. And I'm calling my mom. Why he's in, I said, Mom, this is why I, I said I got him a sponsor. And Cincinnati, I got him a sponsor. I was like, and we got to get him out of Cincinnati. You can't go back to the same places, people, because you can do the same, same things. Thing. So I called my guy in Phoenix. He worked at the comedy club there. And I'm telling him the whole story. And he's, all right, look, we'll, we'll get him a job out here. We'll put him in the kitchen. I told my ex, I told my mom, I was like, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Phoenix. I'm going to stay with him. Got to get him on his feet. Got to get him out of that, that environment. Right. And, you know, comedy clubs, I don't know if you know this, but usually most of the managers, it's a matter of attrition. They either start at the door or they're a waitress. They show they're responsible and then you become management. And it really is, mm -hmm. it's, you know. It's a process. You, process. So I'm thinking, okay, if he can get there, get in the kitchen, working, maybe we'll get to the door. I'm thinking, I'm thinking thoughts of grandeur, mm -hmm. right? So my mom, she was like, I said, I'm going to take him to Phoenix when he gets out. And she was like, nope, nope. She goes, you cannot take him 2,000 miles away from his daughter. And I said, Mom, do you want a dad 2,000 miles away? You want a dead dad? Because that's the options right now. Mm -hmm. And she just wouldn't do it. So I just fell back. I just fell back. So that was January 2014. He ended up overdose of May 20th, 2015. And in the course of that, I wasn't really talking to my mom because I did this article in BuzzFeed. Mm -hmm. And they did this thing called the... Um, how a white comic is one of the top black acts in the country. That was the article. But in the article, they asked me about my family. And I just said, literally, like, my stepdad's an ass. I don't even really mess with them. So when that article came out, my mom wasn't really a mess with me because I, like, I talked bad about her husband. Mm -hmm. So um, 
when Dallas died, we uh, the family kind of comes back together. You let everything go, mm -hmm. and I just remember. I remember at the funeral, uh, I end up buying all the food for the funeral, and my stepdad, who's I can't, I he never said a good word about me. He said, "Man, where did all the food come from?" And my mom was like, "Gary got it." And I just remember he looked at me. And I thought he was gonna say thank you. I thought this this would be the first. This time. the moment. This yeah. the moment. We about to have a breakthrough moment. No, nah, he went. I just walked away. I said, "Damn, he can't even say thank you for the food." So then, what happens is he's got a daughter now. So his the baby mama can't take care of him. She's not doing that great in life. My mom and stepdad they're now they want to get custody, and I don't know any of this is happening. Mm -hmm. I get a call from the guardian at Lightum, which is somebody that represents the kid in the custody battle. Mm -hmm. And she goes, um, hi, this is Gary Old Nassie, yeah, this is him. She goes, are you, uh, so I don't want to give my brother's last name, are you Dallas so-and-so's uh, brother? And I said, yeah, she goes, wow. She goes, I've had like 10 home visits and there's no pictures of you in the house. I asked your mom, did she have any kids we don't know about? And she just said, yeah, my oldest left home when he was 17. She goes, somebody in her office said, you know that, that's Gary Owen's brother. That's his niece. Mm -hmm. So I, I, she goes, look, I'm putting in for emergency removal, which means um, she's not happy with either household. Mm -hmm. I said, what does that mean? She goes, well, she goes into foster care. I said, well, that ain't happening. I said, what do I do? And she goes, well, I got to do some home visits, but if you want to take temporary custody, you know that we can do that. And I'm, I'm giving the Cliffs no further conversation. Okay. So um, she came to my house. And she was like, she goes, I feel like this kid hit the lottery with how we were living. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she applied for the emergency removal and the judge denied it because the judge was like, look, she's not in any physical danger. It's just a bunch of broke people, really. Mm -hmm. So uh, but now my name's on the paperwork. I signed and couldn't. I can't call my mom and be like they think you're a bad parent. So now my name's on the paperwork. So when they when they saw the paperwork about this emergency removal, that's when everything hit the fan. My mom started calling me. What is this? I said, Mom, they, I, they, I couldn't tell you. You know what I mean? So then uh, that got a little tense. And I said, Mom, let, let us take her. Let her, let us take. Because like, you, you can't be 70, in your 70s trying to raise a teenager when she gets older. And I knew the home life wasn't the best. Because I got another brother who was just not a good dude either. He's big. Anyways, so uh, they, what happened is... My mom just kind of cut me off because I wanted to get custody. We we're going to go to court. And I just, I told my ex, I was like, we got to, we got to fall back because I started getting some terrible text messages. And I was like, they're, they're literally about to ruin our life. They're going to make our life hell. And I got to look out for my kids. Mm -hmm. And I felt bad for my niece that I couldn't get custody and everything. I said, but they were about to make our life right. on both sides, the, the baby mama and my mom and, and stepdad and them, because they were looking at it like I'm taking her away right. from everybody. I'm I'm trying to help her. Right. I know what this child's about to go through with her upbringing. I, I mean, I lived it. Right. So I was like, so at that point, everything was cut off. Uh, and then I was just I was just on the outs. So then fast forward, this is all happening in 2016. Mm -hmm. May 20th, 2021, for some reason I was back in Cincinnati I knew it was Dave passed away, so I went to the cemetery to go see just see him. I pull up, and my mom's at the the cemetery. She's at his headstone. Yeah, great sight. And I saw her, and I parked kind of far away. And she, I remember she had a blanket, and I don't know if she was wiping the headstone off or touching his face. And she kept looking at me. Then she looked at back at the headstone, looking at me. I said, I said, oh, this is, this is you got a shot here. I can talk to her. Mm -hmm. So I walked up real slow, and I came up behind her, and. She saw me standing there, and all I was going to do was ask, can I sit next to her? I didn't think we were going to solve everything right then. So I just went, I just, all I said was hi. And she just started yelling. She goes, I don't want to talk to you. And started screaming a bunch of shit. And I'm just like, I said, mom, At the gravesite? Yeah, yeah. It's just me and her. And she started just yelling. And then I was like, I said, mom, I'll leave. I'll leave. I'll come back later. And she goes, no, no, I'll leave. And then she's, she grabbed her blanket and, shit, and she goes, and she goes, and I've been reading everything. She goes, and I hope now you know what it feels like, because the divorce is going on right mm -hmm. now. She goes, and I hope now what it feels like when a bunch of people on the internet say a bunch of shit about you that isn't true. And then she was like, this is a really hard day for me. And then she got in her car and sped off. Now I'm sitting there like head spinning, 
But now I can't spend any time at the cemetery because I'm worried she's going back to tell my stepdad and my other brother Gary's at the graveside. I thought they was about to come in to pick up guns blazing. Right. So I was like, and I mean literally guns a blazing. So I was like, I I had a dip. So that's the last time I talked to her or seen her or anything. Let me ask you this. How different is dating interracially when you first started doing it? Do your segue? You like that? Hey, that's top tier right there. <laughs> I'm like this, man. Let me ask you this. <laughs> dating black women. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, cause I, I, I want to hear you. I, cause I, I don't know if I've ever had a guy, a white, white gentleman like yourself, mm-hmm. that, that dated black women. So I want to, like, because I understand what it was like in the 80s for a black guy trying to date white women mm-hmm. and compared to now. Yeah. Is it different now than it was then? I don't know. I wasn't dating in the 80s. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that old. But uh, I don't know. 90s. I, that's all, all I ever, that's all I ever liked. Like, really? I've, all, I've always been like part of the culture. Yeah. You're going to find me at Magic City. Ah! You ain't going to find me. You ain't going to be a cheater. 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 I said Dolly. Dolly. Not okay. Follies. Oh, okay, okay. Dolly. Okay. okay. Yeah, you're going you gonna to find me at G5. Right. Or KOD. You know? <laughs> you're going to find me at Live on Sunday. Not right. on Saturday during the e- e- right. techno night. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. Where you feel? Where the black people are. Did, did you always feel most comfortable around black people? Yeah, I think I found, like, quote unquote, found your tribe. Yeah. I just always felt comfortable. And, you know, the thing is, like, even when I was in the Navy, you know, my bunk mate, his name was Copera Washington, and he was a black guy from South Carolina. And I remember at that time, there was no internet, so people, you had to get letters from home. Right. So I got this big, swole brother from South Carolina as my bunk mate, got a thick country accent, and <laughs> he gets pictures, and he's like on a John Deere tractor. He's on a farm, and I go, <laughs> I'm looking, I go, were well, you on vacation, Eric right. Copera? He was like, he goes, nah. He goes, right. man, this, that's where I live. I go, right. but I don't live on farms. I, Midwest, black people live in the city. Right. I didn't know black people bailed hay, oh, yeah. lived on farms. I go, I go, black people live on farms. And he literally, he grabbed a black dude from Mississippi, black dude from Georgia, black dude from Arkansas, black from Alabama. He goes, come here, come here, here. He goes, Gary, what'd you just say? I go, black people don't live on farms. They did like to do the right thing. They go, this dude. <laughs> Everybody start busting out these pictures in the country. I go, what the? F-? Mind blown. Right. Mind blown. I was like, oh, right. I am very sheltered as far as this stuff goes. But, I, I can hang out with anybody, right? But I've always been most comfortable, and black people always been the most welcoming to me too. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, right? Like, yeah, my whole life, I don't have issues. The issues I have with, and it could stem from how my stepdad and my dad was. Mm-hmm. Like, the white men in my life were not the greatest. Right. All the black dudes was cool. My football coach was a black dude. Shouts out to Mel Edwards, one of the coolest guys on the planet. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I just always had, all the black dudes I ever met was cool. I never met, like, an asshole. Right. Or treated me bad, or, mm-hmm. so to speak. Even the black guys I went to high school with. Right. They was cool. We didn't have a lot. Mm-hmm. We had a couple. Right. They was cool. Is it is it difficult when you were in your ch- children's life? Was it difficult raising mixed-race kids? Do you Did you ever have a conversation to them, with them, about what life was going to be like being in mixed race? I didn't, like... I didn't have like deep conversations. My daughter's like the activist. Mm-hmm. She's the pro black woman. Okay. My the boys aren't. Like my two boys, they're they're not like that. But uh yeah, my daughter, she's very pro black. Mm-hmm. Like she is like mm-hmm. cause man, when those when the Black Lives Matter movement started and you had the parades and marches. She was there. Yo. My, I don't know where she got a blowhorn. <laughs> the things you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's yelling. I go, what am I? Right. And she started talking about hey, white people. This, I go, uh, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your dad. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care about us, white devils. <laughs> I was like, this, whoa, whoa, white devil. Now, I don't know if she said that. I'm yeah. making that up. But uh, yeah, like she's the activist. So I, my thing with her is like, I'm here to listen. Right. I just want to, I. I and that's what's most important. Like, I don't have the answers. Right. But I want to listen to your side of things. Mm-hmm. And I'm always going to have, I'm always going to have your back in situations right. like that. Right. But we didn't have a lot of, I'm trying to think, we didn't have any big racial issues of them growing up. And granted, it's the environment they grew up in. Mm-hmm. They grew up in a very safe, I don't want to say sheltered environment, but it was like, they didn't, they didn't have to struggle. So they weren't put in situations where 
a cop's going to pull them over. Right. They weren't in those neighborhoods. Right. You know, our neighborhood, everybody know, we knew the cops in our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know, one cop pulled up. I went to high school with him. He knocked on the door. My, I remember my son was like, Dad, there's a cop at the door. Yeah. And I was there, I go, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> he man, they told me you moved in here. He's yeah. in the house. Man. We have Pepsis and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you got some crime to fight? Right. So. Do you remember the last meaningful conversation you had with your daughter? Uh, Like talking? Yeah. Text. Yeah. No, just just a conversation like you and I sitting down now. Like, how was your day at school? You know, how, you know, the dating, whatever the case may be. Do you remember that last conversation? It was it was it was right before she went back to school. So she was a freshman and uh, God, it's been a long time. She graduated and she was a freshman. Uh, Yeah, she's getting ready to go back to Greensboro. And we just. I remember we just sit in the back talking just about nothing, mm-hmm. life and stuff. Your son only date white women, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Takes after his mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard she dating black he get, guys now. He get, it, he get it from a mama. Yeah, he get it from she, a mama. Well, I heard she dating black dudes now. Really? Yeah, yeah, she dating. I didn't do my job. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't put it on her so good. <laughs> I don't know if this is true, but there's a report that you just recently welcomed twins. Damn, you know everything. Yeah, I congratulations. Did. I did. Congratulations. Yep. And one's white, one's black. Nah, Crazy. Man, don't stop. I swear to God, one's got blue eyes. Cause you can tell by the nipples and the balls. <laughs> one's got blue eyes, got these pink balls, these pink nipples. The other one, brown eyes, brown balls, brown nipples. I said, dang, I have twins, and one's black and one's white. Did you think you was gonna be a father again, or did you want to become a father again? That's that's a layer question. Didn't think I wanted to be a father again, mm-hmm. but, and not have a relationship with my kids. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I, I hate that thing. Like, I'm going to do it right this time. Cause I didn't do it wrong. You don't think you did it wrong the first time. I don't think I did it wrong the first time. I was very conscious of how I spoke to them, how I, we disciplined them, how I, there was no, I never put them down. If, if, if all the sports and stuff they played, I was always like, I was the fun dad. Right. You know, I was like, it's not a big deal if you lose. Mm-hmm. I was the fun dad. And I was coaching some of their teams and stuff. So I don't say I did it wrong, but it's twofold. I didn't see myself doing a dab, being a dad, but I think not having a relationship with my kids, you know, it, I mean, the, the, the twins now, they're just awesome. Right. They're, I mean, they're awesome. But they're in that idolizing dad stuff. Right. They're young. You, you know? like that? They're young. They're like nine, 10 months. It right. just happened. So, right. yeah, they're, I mean, and that's the same thing. That's the sucks too is my kids, they don't know them. Right. They don't have a relationship with them. And I don't want them to, I want to meet him when they're four or five, right. you know? So that's that that sucks too. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.